Hey there, thanks for joining me for this paint along. I don't know about you, but one of my favorite summertime activities is camping. We are so lucky to be surrounded by such beautiful sights here in the Pacific Northwest. So many lakes, mountains, trees, and of course, Bigfoot. So for this paint along today, you are going to need two brushes. I would recommend having kind of a flat one like such. This is a half inch flat brush. Then we also have kind of a more narrow pointed brush like this. Okay. You will also need some water, some paper towels and white paint brown, gray, blue, orange, red, black, and purple. I also recommend maybe having a hair dryer on hand to help move things along. So to get us started, we are going to use this flat brush like such. You're going to dip your brush into water to get it a little bit moist, but you don't want it dripping off the brush. Take your blue paint. And you can begin. Painting in the sky. So you can use some short brush strokes like this to really pack in the paint in the texture of the canvas. But then you want to go ahead and you make long brush strokes across the canvas so you don't end up with lines like this. If you find your paint is too thick and not spreading evenly, you can add a little bit more water to it. But again, you don't want too much water because that will make beads of water. They'll start dripping down. You can see right here there is too much water and not enough paint so that's why it's very transparent so you can just go back in with some more paint on your brush and start working that back in We're going to bring the blue down just a little bit more and it's okay if you don't have a straight line across it's actually more interesting if you don't and you'll see why when we start adding the second color for the sky
Okay. We're gonna move on to purple next. Again, you can moisten your brush if it needs it. And even if you have blue on your brush, that's okay. Just dip right in. Start down here and start spreading it back and forth across your canvas. So you can go ahead and dip your brush in a little bit of water and start blending the blue and the purple. And remember to do long fluid brush strokes all the way across. And I'm going to carry this purple all the way down the edge here toward the bottom. And again, you can use the shorter brush strokes just like this to pack the paint into the textured grooves of the canvas, but then just go ahead and back and forth motions across the painting to smooth them out. And we want some more purple down on this side here. And you can see it's kind of in a bend of the wrist when you're doing these long strokes back and forth. Okay, so we're gonna leave this space down here. It's about one fourth, if you look, one, two, three, four, white. And we're gonna use a hair dryer, or this is a good moment for you to take a little break because you want your background to be fairly dry before you start applying like the mountain and Bigfoot. dryer there's still some wet spots but that's okay make sure your brush that we were just using that flat one is being rinsed out right now and you can dab it on a paper towel it doesn't have to be super dry so we're gonna go ahead and use the gray color now and this will be the base for our mountain 
So I'm going to start a little bit above where that purple line is here. So I'm just going to load up my brush and make the mountain go right up there. You can make your mountain as tall as you would like. And again, you don't necessarily want a straight line. Mountains aren't straight. So give it a little bit of a slant. Go ahead and load up your brush again and drag it down. And I'm going to have my mountain start to slant and curve down. So just keep working in the base of your mountain. So load up your brush again and drag it down. So with that brush, as it's starting to lose its paint like that, go ahead and dip it into some water. I wouldn't fully submerge your brush, just the ends of your bristles so they're nice and wet and you can start at the top and kind of fan that color that's already on the canvas. See how it starts to kind of blend? And it's okay if some of the other colors shine through, like you're starting to see purple come through. Could just be more of like a shadow in the mountain. gives it more dimension, a little bit more depth. So I'm just dipping back into my water, no paint, and just working with the existing paint that's already on the canvas. And you can see how you can kind of just smear it around, blend it in. Remember those brush strokes with your wrist. And we might just take a little bit of gray like this at the base of where your mountain would be. Load up the end like this. Start and just drag it up the mountain. Okay, and it's fine if you have like some of this purple showing through here and you have these blunt ends of where your brush stopped. Um, that's okay because we're gonna start blocking in all of these trees like in our example. So now we're going to go ahead and fill in this white space down here with the gray, the same gray.
So back and forth brush strokes. And like I said, don't worry about it seeming uneven. Um, it's all part of the perspective and things in, reach, in nature are rarely even. So that is helpful when you're painting things like this. So I'm loading up this gray again on my brush and I'm actually going to pick up that purple and mix a little bit into my brush so I have this lighter shade and you can just go back and forth kind of on the side of your brush. Just pull across that wet paint with the purple. because that kind of gives your ground a little bit of shadow, a little bit more depth, it's less flat. So just back and forth like such. See, now I have it kind of on the end of my brush. I don't know if you can see that. And we're just gonna go back and forth. And smooth out some of those edges. We can just add a couple lines here and there on the ground and then smooth it out. And I'm going to do a couple more on the edge here. Our big foot is going to be standing right in here, so you might want to make that just a little bit darker with your purple, just right here. It'll be a great shadow. And we might come in on this side too, just to kind of smooth things out and make it a little bit darker so it kind of brings your eye into your painting. Okay. Let's go ahead and clean that brush with some water. Give it a good rinse and you can dry it on your paper towel and set it aside for now. We are now going to pick up the pointier brush here and your white. And we're going to go ahead and paint in our moon. Um, this, I would recommend starting small, just like a dot. And then you can come around that dot and paint a ring around. Better if you start small and make it bigger because you can't go backwards. You can always make it bigger, but you really would have a hard time making that smaller. And I want to have a big moon, big full moon. And don't panic if you're looking at your circle and not thinking it looks very circular. See, 
mine's starting to get kind of straight here. You just take your brush and slowly fan out your paint, drag it out. Kind of smooth out your moon, make more rings. And to add to it as kind of a glowing effect, you can just go around, add a little halo effect here. Like the moon is shining. Kind of like the Van Gogh Starry Night painting, if you've ever seen that. A lot of texture in the sky and movement. With that same brush, you're going to load up the end and you can kind of spin it, twirl it so the end has all the paint. And you're going to just make a lot of little dots. And these little dots are going to be your stars. I know that's one of my favorite things when I go camping is looking at all the stars, trying to find the Big Dipper. And you're going to lightly tap on the canvas. If you push too hard, you won't have a circle. You'll have more of an oval shape. You can make some bigger, smaller, depending on how you push, how much pressure you use when you're painting these. See how small those are? And then I'll make a bigger one right there. When I paint stars, I like to kind of make them into trails. As you can see, we kind of have this curving shape through the sky. I think that's very interesting. And it really draws your eye in to your painting. Of course, you can place them wherever you wish. Add a few up here, maybe. Okay, and now we can go ahead, once we're satisfied with how many stars we have, we can start painting some snow on the top of our mountain. So load up your brush and start at the top and slowly drag down. It's okay if you kind of end up skipping a little bit. Creates more texture in your mountain. You can go a little bit wider So I'm not really applying much pressure when I'm doing this. I just kind of start and slowly drag down. That's how you get 
the gray to show through and give your mountain kind of a a texture instead of being flat. Okay, so now you can clean out that brush. And you can set it aside. Pick up this square brush here again. And dip into your orange paint. and go ahead and make a triangle. Oops. And you might actually find it easier to go back to this brush and make your lines and fill. Okay, now you can go right into your red. You don't necessarily have to clean your brush. Load that up and make a line straight across the top. And again, and then angle it. So it's an angle of the tent. You can go ahead to the other side and just slowly drag some red on that side to even it out. Okay. So now we can go back to the orange. This time you may want to go ahead and give your paintbrush a quick rinse and then dab it with your paper towel to dry it out so it's not too wet. Create another triangle. We're going to go right here. It can be a little bit smaller if you want it to be, or bigger. Doesn't have to be the same size. And you're going to have some of the the gray or the purple kind of showing through and that's not really a bad thing um you can always go back in later and add a second coat 
of paint if you wish, if you don't like the look of that, but you wanna let it dry in between coats. So now I'm going back in with the red and I'm gonna decide that this angle of the tent shows instead. So it's as if someone is standing right here in between the tents so you can see either side. Okay. So now we can take that same red that we are already working with and our campfire is gonna be right around here. So start at the bottom, kind of push and drag up. So you get a flame shape. Start at the bottom and push and drag up. You can even kind of twist your wrist when you do it and drag to give you a different kind of shape. Go ahead and rinse your brush a little bit. Dab it on the paper towel and dip the end into some orange and just come right in like you just did and add some orange flames. And then I'm gonna add just a couple little orange dots up here, like they are embers burn burning off from the campfire. Go ahead and rinse your brush. And we're gonna go ahead and start our Bigfoot. So you're gonna need your brown, this dark brown here. Picture how tall you want your Bigfoot to be. I'm gonna shoot for about here. And I'm just gonna start with a round curve. and bring it down like this. Okay, so if you notice it's more wide at the top and it starts to kind of taper down toward his legs. And it's okay if you're covering up some of the stars you painted not to worry. So then I'm going to start going in with the brown to make some legs. Start kind of thin with your brush here and then just go over again because just like the moon you can't go smaller once you've already painted so my best advice is to work small and then add to make it wider. I think it's kind of funny if my Bigfoot has skinnier legs, tall skinny legs. 
You can make them as wide as you want. You can make Bigfoot as tall as you want. I like the idea of him having thinner legs so he kind of blends in with the trees. And make them just a little bit taller. Okay. So now we're gonna go in and start with the arms. I'm just gonna have one arm come through here. And you can see the white from one of my stars is pulling through and that's okay. It kind of creates a highlight in his fur. And we're gonna be having to mix kind of a lighter brown later for his hands, feet, and his face. Okay, so now with that little bit of brown that is already on your brush, you're gonna go ahead and get your white paint. And you can see I had tested this earlier. Just dip into the white and mix a lighter shade of brown. Okay. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and make these shapes here, kind of like a snowman or an eight. Again, working small, I would start with where his eyes would be and get a little bit bigger. And then go directly underneath that oval you just painted. And it's kind of like a sock monkey, I guess. Go ahead and paint where his mouth would be. And if you feel like it's still too dark, you can just go ahead and add some more white and mix it on your brush here. Okay. And I think I'm just gonna take a little bit of white right now and just kind of do one of these on there. And then just take your brush and smooth it out. Again, a little bit of paint goes a long way. And I think I want him to be actually a little bit lighter so his eyes will stand out better when we go to paint those in. So I'm just going to work in an even lighter shade. I just added more white to some brown. Okay. So with this same brush for his hands, just go ahead and start at the top and then push toward the bottom so you kind of get this teardrop shape.
And I know we all have five fingers. I like to think that Bigfoot maybe has four. But you can give him as many or as little as you want. And now time for the feet. So we're gonna start with the one farthest away from us and I would just go ahead and paint almost like a shoe. If you notice, I'm pushing with my brush and then pulling and lifting away. I'm gonna come down here and do the same thing. Push and lift toward his foot or his ankle. And you can make the back heel if you want, a little bit more defined. And now I'm gonna give him a toe. There's a big toe. Just like that. And with this same light shade, you can kind of push on your brush and drag. So you have paint at the end. And we can kind of come over here and lightly drag in some highlights in his hair. Gives him some texture also. Or her, could be a a lady Bigfoot. Okay. And with the dark brown again, you can also go back in if you want to and you can add a little bit of tufts of hair at his ankles. You can go back into his hand if you want. And we need a nose. So here's that dark brown that we started with, that is the fur. Go back in where you have your face color and just kind of darken it just a little bit. And give him a little nose. So now we're gonna let Bigfoot dry. Go ahead and rinse out your brush. We'll add his eyes and mouth in one second. Okay, so I just rinse this brush and I'm gonna kinda pull out the bristles, you can see, kind of flatten them out with your fingers. And you can also go in with a pen if you want to. Just kind of dip into your black paint, just get the ends. And you can come in, or like I said, get a Sharpie or something, get a dark um, marker. and you can make a little smile. And for the eyes, you can make them open or I'm actually gonna hold this flat for a second so I can get in there. So I made his eyes closed, like he's sleeping. <clears throat> and now we can go ahead and paint in a bunch of trees. So 
So we can go ahead and start right next to Bigfoot here. Make a straight line. And then with the same brush, you're just gonna push and kind of in a zigzag formation, you can add some tree limbs. Okay. We're gonna add one right here. Again, starting at the top, just kind of push in a Z type formation. And it's okay if you paint in front of what you just did, you know, kind of gives your painting more dimension. And you can also start at the bottom if you prefer and just go back and forth. And it's okay if your trees are a little crooked also. You can see this one kind of veers off to the corner. Off the edge of the painting and that's fine. And you don't want to push too hard. If you push too hard, it just becomes a big solid mass. So practice lightly pushing in so you kind of get it showing through between the branches. And we'll make that one a little bit taller. So you can even kind of work in straight lines like you see across your tree. Kind of come right up right behind that tent. So you can see where we left it purple on the mountain kind of just acts as a shadow effect.
make that one a little bit taller. Again, you can make your trees any height you wish. I'm actually going to sneak another one right there. And then I'm going to do one big one right here. Okay, so now with the same brush and that little bit of black, you can make a line where the zipper would be in the tent. Or if you prefer, you can always use a permanent marker. And you can kind of define your tent shape a little bit better with the black by giving it an outline. And we can also go back up into the mountain and do a couple thin lines right at the top and down to kind of help give it some more dimension. So there's maybe a shadow makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. And of course, we can rinse out our brush and add a couple logs now. To our fire there. Go ahead and get that brown. and just kind of drag out from the fire. And this time I'm gonna drag it back into the fire. Maybe I'll add a log right back here too, poking through. And we can go back into the black as well. Don't even have to really rinse in between because it's a darker color. And if you wanted to, you can add a couple lines like this right across for more of a shadow effect. And again, they don't have to be straight. That's okay. The ground is bumpy.
and I'm just lightly dragging it across the, the canvas. We can also define his toes a little bit, add a couple lines, as well as his fingers if you feel like they're too close when you first painted them. Kind of just kind of turn up his smile just a little bit. There we go. Wonder what Bigfoot is dreaming about. Well, thank you for watching the video, and I hope you are giving it a try right now. If there's any part that you are struggling with, you can always pause the video and rewind. Um, I hope you had a lot of fun because I certainly did. Thank you.